back when I first started using a tiling window manager, I was using i3. i3 is a manual tiler, and at the time, it was basically all I knew, and I felt like it was great. Then I started using some automatic or dynamic tilers, whatever you want to call them. Things like BSPWM and Awesome. And now going back to a manual tiler with Sway, it's really rough. Like, it's really, really rough. I don't want to have to go and press Super B, and then that's going to make this horizontal split. I don't want to have to go and then press Super V to make this vertical split. I just want it to do all of its things for itself, and I don't want to worry about it. I'm sure the people who like manual tilers really do like this workflow, but I'm struggling to get back into it. So i3 and Sway basically split in the exact same fashion. If we go from a blank desktop and start spawning windows, by default, everything is going to be set to a vertical split. So you get this really not very usable layout. But once you start manually setting the splitting direction, this one right here, this is now going to split in a horizontal fashion because I've set it to do a horizontal split, whereas this one is going to split in a vertical fashion because I've already manually set it to be vertical. But today's application auto tiling basically takes away all of that thought and then just does all of it for me. So if I go and make a new window, obviously exactly the same, there's nothing here. Make another one, and another one, another one, another one, another one. This instantly is so much better for me. Originally, this was made for use with i3, but with Sway being a drop and replacement for i3, it works just fine in Sway as well, and I'm absolutely going to use it. Now, the way the splitting is being done isn't based on some sort of set layout or anything like that. It's currently based on where your focus is located. So when I spawn a new window, the reason why I was going down in this direction is because my focus jumps to whatever the newly created window was. So if I go and get rid of some of these windows and I go and focus on this window here, it's going to split like this, focus on this window here again, it's going to be split like this. So you can get these fairly complex layouts. You're not set into one specific way of using it. Now, getting this running is absolutely dead simple. So inside of my Sway config or your i3 config, if you're using that one instead, what you're going to do is add one line. That line being exec auto tiling. Now, in my case, I'm using dash dash no dash startup dash id. That's just being used there because I don't need the startup id functionality because it's a CLI based application. But this part is completely optional. Exec auto tiling all you need to do. Now, there are some other auto-tiling-like scripts that do exist. A lot of the alternatives, though, require you modifying your keybinds and sort of sending those keybinds into the application, which isn't difficult to set up, but is a little bit more time-consuming. This doesn't require any of that. Now, when you're running it like this, which is the way that I like it, it's going to run on every single one of your desktops. This makes sense for me. I want everything to be consistent, but maybe you don't want it to be like that and just want it to run on, let's say, desktops one, three, five, so on and so forth. What you can do instead is include an extra option, dash W, and then list out whatever desktops you want it to run on. So one, three, five, seven, and nine. If we then go and relaunch the application, as we can see here on desktop one, operating like we saw before, desktop two, operating like this, three, like this, four, like this, so on and so forth. Now, if you're the sort of person who likes to use, say, a stacking window, or you like to use a tabbed window, what I would suggest is go and disable certain desktops from the script, and then only use that functionality on that desktop. In some situations, the script doesn't exactly play nicely with those modes, and you might see things sort of spawning in ways you don't expect, especially when you go and disable the functionality, where in this case, if we go and press Super E, it doesn't actually go and put them into the correct layout, it just dumps them on the screen. From my experience though, that's basically the worst thing that's going to happen, so if you don't really mind that, it doesn't really matter. Now the dev is fully aware that problems like this do occur with stacking and tabbing. The dev is also aware that he doesn't care, so it's not going to be fixed, and if you want to use that, basically just don't use it on desktops where it's going to be a problem. The other reason why you might want to disable it is, let's say, in certain cases, you do still want the ability to manually tile. I don't. I just don't want to be able to manually tile. But if you really want that functionality, 
then yeah, maybe it is actually kind of useful to still have that as an option. But technically there is nothing stopping you manually tiling on a desktop that has the script running. But when you do start manually tiling, it can start causing certain issues with the script, especially when you're tiling in a direction the script wouldn't normally tile in. When you then try to spawn something off of that, sometimes it's going to spawn in ways that don't really make any sense. Not every single time, but enough of the time where I would just avoid manually tiling altogether if you want to be using this script. But if you're using this script, you probably don't care about manually tiling anyway, so it's never going to be a problem. Now, auto tiling also has a dash E option. So when you open up the application from your terminal, it'll tell you what events you are currently subscribed to. In my case being event.window and event.mode. So basically when actions occur that fall under these events, so making a new window, closing a window, things like that, then some action in the script is going to occur. The dash E option lets you change which events you are subscribed to. I wouldn't recommend changing this, but if you really want to, there is a list of these events over on the GitHub for the library being used in this application. Problem is, most of the events, none of the events right here, are documented. So you're basically going to have to work it out for yourself. And from my experience, there's no reason to touch these anyway. You may have already spotted the splitting logic by now, but if you haven't, it's very straightforward. So if the width is bigger than the height, it is split along the width. If the height is bigger than the width, then it is split along the height. Nothing more complex than that. That is literally all there is to it. But it does allow for a lot of really powerful layouts. So you can still do things like a grid layout and things like that if you pay attention to where you're splitting from. And it also allows for a really interesting interaction. So if I take this window here and then make it much, much bigger. Now, instead of splitting down this way, it's going to split like this instead. So you can easily force layouts if you're happy to go and move windows around like this and still get access to things like a master sack layout effectively like we're seeing right here. Now, it doesn't work 100% of the time. So this right here should be splitting down this way, but for some reason it is not. I'm not 100% sure why that's the case, but if I do make it much, much bigger, it does go and do what I'd expect it to do. But outside of those very specific situations where you're trying to force a very set layout, everything works basically as you'd expect. But if you're trying to get a layout like that, you'd be much better off using something that actually has a layout system or just doing manual tiling so you can force exactly where it's going to go. As of right now, this isn't packaged in many locations, but it is available on the AUR, Alpine Linux, Nix, and also Void. But if you want to use it on anything else, it's not really that difficult to set up manually anyway. It has one dependency that you probably don't already have, Python i3 IPC, which is basically an API for interacting with i3, which is a bit easy to use in the i3 API, and then pretty much you're good to go. It's a Python script. There's not much to it. I totally understand the appeal of manual tiling. It's just not for me. I've gotten so used to automatic tiling that going back away from it just does not really make any sense to me. If I ever go and start using i3 again, I'm probably going to use this script or one of the scripts like it. So this script doesn't have any sort of layout functionality, but I do believe that some others do. I've been meaning to try some of those out, and at some point in the future, I probably will be. So if you've got any suggestions for auto-tiling scripts I should try out, I would certainly love to hear them. Let me know in the comment section down below what you use. Do you use a manual tiler? Do you use a dynamic tiler? If you use Sway, do you use something like this script? I would love to know. So if you like this video, I'm going to go and like the video. If you really like the video and you want to become one of... I keep forgetting I can't press the button... These amazing people over here, go check out my page, subscribe, so I'm going to pay the link in the description down below. I'm not redoing that. I've got a podcast called Tech Over Tea. I've got a gaming channel called Brody Robinson Plays. That's going to be it for me, and I'm out.